Motorhead Garage, the program that each week introduces you to and shows you how to install the latest in exciting and innovative products for your vehicle. Now here's your host, Dave Dobson. This is Motorhead Garage presented by DragonFireTools.com. Your wheels, of course, they are so important to the function of your vehicle, but they also serve a purpose. They're, they're the bling as you come down the road. It might be the first thing people see, Rob, uh, but these things are exposed to a lot of hazards and a lot of rough conditions out there. What are some things that can go wrong with, with expensive wheels on your car? Well, thanks, Dave. We appreciate you having us today. Uh, you're, you're right. The wheels are the jewelry of the car. Uh, people want their wheels to look nice. Uh, curbs, curb damage, pothole damage, delamination of clear coat, anything that uh, would be damaging or discoloring to the wheel, people want them to look nice. They want them back to the factory finish. Something they see a lot is that delamination. How does that occur? What happens? Uh, scratches in the clear coat. It gets underneath of the clear coat and then it starts to peel, fade away, turn yellow, discolor. So an alloy wheel repair, how do you fix all of those problems? So the first and foremost, we have a mobile fleet, mobile remanufacturing centers that go on site to dealers, body shops, tire stores. We fix their wheels on site, uh, whether it's curb damage, a bent wheel, needs a full, full refinish. Uh, we can do those repairs for them on site. And you can do all of that with one of these mobile units? We can do all that with one of these units. And what kind of fixes are we talking about you can make right here in the truck? Cosmetic damage, bent wheels, repainting wheels, recoloring wheels. And, and so walk me through, what's, what's inside? Yeah, so when the technician goes to the dealer, body shop, whatever the case may be, they take the wheels off for the customer. They take it inside. The first uh, location in the truck is a prep room. So they're breaking down the tire. Uh, they're straightening out the wheel if it needs straightening, uh, basically getting the circumference back to the wheel. Uh, they put it on their prep bench. They're taking out the damage, uh, whether it be the scratches, discoloration, whatever the case may be. They're prepping the wheel for the final coats. They take it into the next stage of the truck, which is a downdraft paint booth. Same thing you'd see in a body shop. They paint the wheel, clear coat the wheel, and it's cured under heat lamps. And then when it's cured, they uh, put the tire back on, put it back on the car for the customer. How long is that process? Usually about an hour a wheel. That's incredible, right on site. Right on site. And what if my wheel, when you come to me, we find it's damaged beyond repair, there's nothing left to do? So we do have thousands of factory remanufactured uh, wheels in stock, so if for some reason we deem it's unsafe to be repaired or uh, you just want new wheels, we can replace them from our inventory. Okay, so I don't need a fix to get new wheels from You Amazon. don't, and it's a fraction of the cost of a new one. What does your technician need once he or she gets on site? They don't need anything. Uh, the units are self-sufficient, self-powered, and with our partners over at Powerbox, we've been able to create a proprietary unit that has electric equipment aboard, which is quiet, it's much better for the atmosphere, there's no emissions, no refueling. And you talked about painting. Uh, what kind of color options do we have? Uh, so we have about 40 of our own proprietary colors that we've created uh, with a private supplier. Uh, so our technicians know how to color match just about anything that's out there. We can even do black or multicolored wheels. What if I have a repair that you can't make here in your mobile unit? So for some reason the wheel is uh, heavily damaged. It needs lathing, high polishing. We can send it back to one of our remanufacturing centers where they can do more extensive repairs, such as when a, lay, a wheel like this one needs lathing or high polishing and powder coating. How do you cover the whole country in alloy wheel repair? So we have 100 locations nationwide. We also have 50 remanufacturing centers. Uh, we have hundreds of these mobile units across the country that go to dealers, body shops, tire stores, pretty much anybody that needs a wheel repair. What happens if you can't get to me or I can't get to you? So we have a ship and fix program. If you give us a call, let us know where you're at. Uh, we'll send you uh, a box and a label, and you can ship the wheel to us. We'll repair it, and we'll send it back to you. Who are your customers at LA Wheel Repair? Pretty much anybody uh, that needs a wheel repair, but we, we primarily do work for body shops, dealers, tire stores, service centers, and the retail public. Uh, we have shops nationwide that you can come directly to, get your wheel repaired, get it recolored, get the bends taken out. Pretty much anything that you need, we'll take care of. How do I know I'm gonna get a quality repair on my wheel? It's a good question, Dave. All of our processes have been tested by a well-known and accredited facility. Uh, all our processes were deemed to be safe, and you can view those SCE certificates on our website. We pride ourselves in world-class wheel repair and a first-class customer experience. If you've got wheels that are scuffed up or bent up, you can get them fixed right on your location awrswheelrepair.com. These guys are the best. 
We'll return with more Motorhead Garage presented by DragonFireTools.com in just a few minutes. There are about 327 million people in the United States, and 67% of them have driver's licenses. Which state has the most licensed drivers per capita? We can tell you it's not New York. Only 59% of New Yorkers drive. At 88%, Vermont has the most licensed drivers per capita. Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonFireTools.com, is brought to you by RockAuto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Campbell's Custom Care.com, home of the Don Detail Spray. And by Painted Auto Body Parts.com, the leading U.S. auto body parts online store. Hey, thanks for joining us here at Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonFireTools.com. Now, UTVs like this are ubiquitous. They are everywhere, and people love them. And, of course, they are very capable. But there's a lot of things you can do, Jared, to enhance the capabilities of one of these. Where, where do you want to start if you buy a new UTV? Uh, well, our main focus at Texas Tough Customs is always to, to make the machine more capable by putting bigger tires on it. So for us, our lifts uh, prioritize moving the front wheels forward and the rear wheels back so that you can fit larger tires so that it's more capable in off-road situations. The second thing that we focus on is uh, suspension, articulation, and ride quality. And we always try to enhance the suspension from stock to make it flex more, to make it ride better, and uh, just to make it perform you know, overall better. Well, let's talk about the stance of the vehicle first. You, you mentioned that, moving, moving everything out. How does that enhance your performance on the trail? Particularly on uh, on this Talon buggy we have back here, um, it's got our Texas Tough Customs 3-inch long travel kit on it. So this particular one widens it uh, by 2.2 inches on each side and then gives it 8 inches overall of wheelbase. And what that does is it makes it more stable when you're going to climb stuff, steep hills, uh, off-camber situations, make it more stable because you're a little bit wider now. Um, gives you a better approach angle and a departure angle in both the front and the back when you're climbing flat rock faces or, or even going down into deep mud holes and different stuff like that. How big can you go with stock suspension and how big can you go with suspension from Texas Tough Customs? Absolutely. Uh, stock suspension setup, you can usually run about a 30 inch tire before you start rubbing, uh, depending on the model. Now, like I said, this is a Talon X, so they got a little bit shorter wheelbase, so you can run smaller tires. So about a 30 or so. With our three inch kits, our forward arms, all of our kits that we offer for the Talon, uh, you can run a 35 inch tire, no issues, no rub, no nothing, so. Well, there's a, a stark difference between the stock control arms here. We're looking at the upper and lower that come stock with a Talon like this. How are Texas Tough Customs arms different from what we see stock? Obviously, absolutely. there's a visible difference, but how do you how do you make them different? Yeah, so obviously these are the stock arms. They're super small tubing, uh, super thin wall tubing as well. The the ones that we have on this model back here are our our three inch kit. It's kind of a, a medium road, and these right here in particular are our stream arms. So these arms right here are made for the guys that are running huge eight inch portals, 46 inch tires, 50 inch tires. Uh, this is our ball joint delete kit. So as you can see. It, this particular kit is our most extreme option. It's going to convert the, the stock ball joint to a one and a quarter heim joint, uh, which is exponential improvement over stock. You know, you don't break the ball joints anymore. You can run the biggest tire you want, uh, and, and you can, you know, get after it in the mud or in the rocks or whatever you want to do. And when you go to a bigger tire, that's a lot of unsprung weight out there, too. So what kind of things do you have to take into consideration when you're building your control arm? Yeah, uh, so for these in particular, uh, like I said, we were talking about tubing sizing. This, uh, the, our extreme kits is, uh, they're, they're inch and a half quarter wall tubing, uh, whereas the, the stock stuff is about an inch and a quarter, probably 095 wall. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, but, but these big, the big arms, the extreme arms, we do inch and a half uh, quarter wall tubing, uh, DOM, and we make sure that we use all the, the biggest components that we can to run on here. We're running three quarter himes at the frame with custom bushings. Like I said, uh, with the ball joint delete kits, we're running inch and a quarter himes with custom portal plates with three eighths, three eighths plate everywhere. Um, and so, so we make sure that we build our arms big enough so that it can handle these 40, 50 inch tires. Cause some of these tires and wheel combinations can be several hundred pounds just for one tire so our arms have to be able to hold that when it is lifted when the tires lifted or you know when you're in a mud hole or anything like that so so it enables you to put the, the tire on there in the first place 
and it's going to stand up to the beating it's going to take. Absolutely, absolutely. And now moving here from front to back on, on the talon behind us here, the bumper stands out. That is a really cool look as it's coming at you. That's something you make in Texas Tough Custom. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, uh, on this one in particular, this is one of our uh, short stubby bumpers. So it's going to be one of our small, medium bumpers. We build them for all size winches. So we do UTV winches or all the way up to big, uh, you know, truck winches, Jeep winches like we have on the Pioneer over here. One of the things we're working on uh, is some full uh, winch bumpers that go all the way around the headlights where you can run big winches, small winches, UTV winches, truck winches, whatever you want. We uh, also make rock sliders uh, to protect the sides of the buggy when you're in rock situations or even in mud holes. Um, and then uh, we're working on also doing some uh, rear winch bumpers as well. Uh, so that's something that's, that's coming in the near future. The rock sliders, the suspension, the bumper are things you can do at home. You can order those parts from Texas Tough Customs. The cage, though, that you guys make that, but that's something that's a little different. Everything we offer is on our website. Um, our cages, we do in-house only. Uh, I like to do them in-house only so that I have the buggy there so that we can work out all the kinks. And when you get the finished products, it's exactly what you want. Usually what I'll do with the customer is I'll have a sit-down meeting with them. I'll ask them to send me some pictures of cages that they like from other buggies. Um, and I'll incorporate the design elements that they uh, prefer from the other cages. And, uh, and I'll make them a custom cage. I'll render the drawings for them, send them back their renderings, and then they'll come back to me with yes or no, and then I'll start cutting and bending and building their cage. And you've got some other new stuff coming down the pike as well. Absolutely. Uh, another thing that we're working on is some hydraulic steering options for both the Pioneer and the Talon uh, so that we can get away from the manual steering gearbox. Uh, a lot of the big tire guys seem to keep breaking the, the gear, gearboxes in them, so we're, gonna, we're working on some, uh, some hydraulic steering options for both the Pioneer and the Talon. You can get the most out of your UTV. Go to TexasToughCustoms.com. Everything super high quality, made in the USA, and guaranteed for life. We'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by DragonFireTools.com. So do not touch that dial. The first steam-powered road-going vehicle was invented in 1769. And steam power remained popular for another 150 years. Early steam engines had boilers that had to be lit by hand, and they took about 20 minutes to build up enough pressure. Furthermore, steam-powered cars had only about a 30-minute supply of water on board, a far cry from the high-tech cars we all drive today. Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonFireTools.com, coming to you from the Campbell's Custom Care Studio. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonFireTools.com. Now, Motorheads, you know how it is. You get in a fender bender, maybe you need a bumper, maybe you need a fender piece, something like that. Well, there's a few options, and I've seen a lot of folks driving around rooming with uh, a body panel on there that's not painted, and they're waiting until they have a chance to get it painted. What's the problem with that? Problem is that when you install a car, a car part, especially the metal, sheet metal, uh, like a fender or a hood, you install it in a car and you don't paint it, it's going to rust right after the first rain. So a few weeks later, you're gonna have rust in your hood, and guess what? The part is garbage right after that. You can't really paint it anymore because once you paint it, rust is like a cancer to a human being. So there's no point in doing that. So, so then you can wait for the body shop to get you in. So what are some of the problems with that? Obviously, you're driving around with a wrecked car for a while. Now, body shops are very expensive these days. We have the price cheaper than any most body shops out there, and we're very affordable. Body shops they charge three hundred fifty, four hundred dollars to paint a bumper. We charge one ninety five, and and by we painted auto parts. Paintedautoparts.com. Yeah, and so how many different cars do you offer parts for on your website? Pretty much ninety eight percent of them out there. Uh, we everything that's available aftermarket we do carry. We have about ninety thousand different uh, items. And how many? Uh, what kind of different parts are we talking? About? Obviously, have fenders and bumpers and that sort of thing. Bumpers, fenders, hoods, headlights, grills, anything like uh, exterior body parts. And you send the parts actually painted mm -hmm. right from your facility. Where, where are they painted, first of all? In Chicago Land. Very good. And you're using, are you using the VIN off of the vehicle or, or are you using the paint code or how does it work? Uh, the customer must provide us with the paint code. So if you have a custom paint job, still no problem. You guys can match that color. As long as they provide us with the correct paint code, yes. I know one of the big concerns our, our viewers are going to have is fitment. You're getting a, getting a part from, you know, it's not original, an original part. How's it going to fit on the vehicle? Very well, actually. The aftermarket companies have improved a lot in the past uh, 10, 15 years. I started this 20 years ago. I remember having quite a few problems of car parts not fitting well. 
and uh, a lot of complaints and uh, therefore a lot of the aftermarket companies have improved a lot. So I, I honestly rarely have any complaints about a part not being fit well. What's the process like once I find out I need a part? Uh, how do I go about getting it from you? PaintingAutoParts.com. Just go to PaintingAutoParts.com, uh, select your ear, make and model, choose the whatever part you need, bumper, fender, headlight, hood, whatever it is, just add it to cart. If it's a painted part, we have a drop down menu, you can choose your paint coat. Make sure it's very important to get your own paint coat from your own car, do not call the dealer. A lot of times people call the dealerships, they give them the VIN numbers and the dealerships give them wrong paint coats. Therefore, I do recommend that you obtain your own paint coat from your own car yourself, do not call the dealer. And once you place the order, how long till I get my part? It's 10 to 15 business days for painted parts. Uh, however, in the busy season like the spring, uh, could take a few days more. We're, you know, a little behind, running a little behind. Well, so it's still impressive. People have got to realize you can't stock painted parts already because you don't know what, what color and what part people are going to order. So you, you, you're stocking some unpainted parts, and then when folks order it, then you, you're shipping it. That yeah, some people, some people, they think that everything is ready to go and ships next day. Uh, but no, it is not. We have to actually physically paint the part before we ship it, so it's a process. I know we've, we've addressed the fitment there. What about the, the quality of the paint job? How does it compare to the OEM paint job? We do uh, the same job as uh, any dealership would do or a body shop. It's the same process. Uh, we, we prep the parts before we paint them, uh, base coat, clear coat, and then we buff them after that. It's exactly the same thing like any body shop does or the dealer. It's the easy way to do things. It's the cost effective way to do things and it's gonna match right every time. PaintedAutoParts.com is the place to go to get painted auto parts. We'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by DragonfireTools.com, so keep it right here. There's a rainbow of paint colors available for cars, but in the U.S., 73% of all cars are painted one of four colors. Can you name them? Gray is the fourth most popular. Silver is third at 16%. 19% of all cars sold in the U.S. are black, and white tops the list at the most popular paint color in the country. Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonfireTools.com, industrial workbenches with integrated tool storage, and brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Better battery bolts, you're nuts not to try these bolts. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. And by Priority Tire, moving with you. Well, you just spent over 100 hours building your new engine. You put it inside your car and what's the tendency? Floor it! You wanna go and spin those tires and burn them up. Probably not the best idea. Welcome to this AMSOIL Tech Tip. It's all about the break-in procedure. And why do we even want to do a break-in procedure? Well, I'm going to show you. It's a cross-hatch pattern. How do you do that and when do you want to do it? Well, when you build a new engine, you want to make it a little rough for the piston springs to seat inside the cylinder. So I can show you how it's done. We just lubricated the hone, stuck it down in the cylinder, run it up and down for a while, stop it before you remove the hone, pull it out, and voila, you got it. You either have a cross-hatch pattern or you got a glazing hone here that's gonna break it. But with that done, Len, we have a problem because you know all this stuff's still a rough surface. You got some break in oil and that's specific. It is, what you wanna do there is you're creating that surface finish where there's actually some peaks and some valleys in there and what you wanna do is knock those down and make a mated surface between the cylinder liner and the ring. So the way you do that with an oil is you use a, a little bit less robust base oil uh, and you use quite a bit of anti-wear protection additive. So you see that kind of a common thing in break-in oils. And what that'll do is it'll allow those mating surfaces to get closer to touching and actually seat. So you're knocking off some high edges and you're seating those things together. Now, AMS Oils, a synthetic oil company, this is a little bit different. Tell us about this actual break-in oil. Yeah, the break-in oil here, to, to do what I was just describing, we actually are using a conventional base stock for this product. It just knocks those peaks and valleys down better. Yeah, and that's a good idea. You absolutely want to knock them down. You want to break it in, so take it easy and get it out of there. It recommends about a thousand miles or your manufacturer specifications. The break-in oil is an amazing product and there's plenty more at amsoil.com. 
two Corvette fanatics take the title for our PaintedAutoParts.com Motorhead of the Week. Stuart and Alice Siegel out of Phoenix, Arizona, fell in love with Corvettes about 35 years ago. They just happened upon a big Corvette show. They were around the area and every car that came past them was a Corvette and they just had to have one. And boy, did they get a beauty. Take a look at this 1966 C2. The Seagulls went all in, I'm telling you. They put the car through a two year frame off restoration right away. Since then, the car has been a two time national class winner and it's placed in 11 out of 12 national shows they've entered. And that's not too shabby for a car they actually drive to the events. Stuart told me this thing is no trailer queen by any means. And of course, you know, driving a classic can be a little bit risky. Just last year, this is tragic, their beloved C2 got rear-ended. And after 32 months of work, and thanks to their insurance company, the car was as good as new. Through the years, Stuart and Alice have had a number of Corvettes currently in their stable, their beloved C2, as well as a gorgeous C7 from 2015. So congratulations go out to Stuart and Alice Siegel, the PaintedAutoParts.com Motorheads of the Week. Be sure to say hello to all our friends out there in the Fast Glass Corvette Club down there in Phoenix. Now it is your turn. If you or someone you know should be our Motorhead of the Week presented by PaintedAutoParts.com, just send us a note at MotorheadGarage.tv or find us on the socials. We'll see you next time here on Motorhead Garage presented by DragonFireTools.com. Until then, drive safely.